Hey, Buzzheads, Curtis Tucker here, That Buzz Guy, on another exciting episode of That Buzz Guy podcast and YouTube channel. I am here with Ken Hunnell. Ken, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. good. Uh, Ken was on a prior episode where I interviewed you. Uh, you live here. Well, you don't live here, Nina. You have nope. a business here, Nina. Yep. So that's how we are. So so let's just jump jump right in real quick. How How are we connected? Yeah. Well, um, ironically, we're connected um, by going for it. Uh, because if you listen to Curtis's last podcast, he said to go for it. And something I was excited about was going for it. So Curtis, uh, is a local celebrity here, I don't know in, about that. <laughs> here in Enid. And so as I was, uh, purchasing my business here in Enid, I had recognized you as with the Enid buzz and the 30,000 plus, probably more than that, considerably more than that now followers on your Facebook and just. Uh, started as a fanboy, kind of following you around and seeing what you were doing, and then reaching out uh, from emails to I think I had I don't remember oh on Facebook I connected you uh -huh. actually um, and I and I just kind of kept putting some stuff out there and then uh, listening to your podcast uh, taking putting into play the things that you were recommending on your podcast to start recording my own podcast and then uh, you wrecked your you wrecked your equinox or yeah the, yeah and so i posted i had up until then i hadn't really posted on your facebook stuff i've been watching and and kind of reaching out a little bit but i hadn't commented and then i commented and then we just kind of started talking from there uh having lunch every so often getting to know you getting to know what you're doing and then um man it's it just been uh again i, I feel like an opportunity a, a testament to go for it that um I just kind of kept reaching out. I yeah. kept try, trying to get in front of you. And so we've developed a relationship over the last year. Uh, just kind of guys guys that pod. Kind of uh, here and there. Yeah. 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 And then uh, catch it up every so often. And I'm learning about all things Enid uh, through you. And we, we just connect every so often. And we have pretty good chemistry. We're, we're two like-minded fellows. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I'm always looking for. And that's, that's exactly why I do the podcasting. I'm not really making any money with the podcasting. Um, I think a lot of people use their podcast to make money other ways. And, and I don't even, I don't think I'm making any money any other ways with the podcast, but for me, it was more about, and so I talk, I don't, I think I talked a little bit about it in that episode where I talked to a business coach last December and through that discussion, she kind of taught me that there's two words that are key for me when it comes to business. And one of them is building community and the other one was adventure. And so I think that's what, and that, that really explains Enid Buzz. I like building a community, kind of, kind of building this community and providing them with information and news and insights and, and stuff like that. And so that Buzz guy is actually, I'm trying to build a community of guys that like to podcast or are entrepreneurs or they like to blog or they like to go out on adventures. And, and when I say adventures, it's not really like I'm a thrill seeker, um, like I'm wanting to go out and bungee jump every weekend. I'm more like, let's go, you know, let's go do this event, you know, go see a concert or go interview a, a celebrity or go follow the solar eclipse of the sun, the right. total eclipse of the sun or things like that, where it's more kind of slow adventures, not really adrenaline adventures, but that's the kind of the community I'm trying to build. So when you reached out to me, I'm like, wow, this is really working. So when you guys are out there listening to podcasts or blogs and you have like, let's say you like, and I, I'm not even going to mention him. Let me think of somebody else. Um, let's say, um, ah, see now nobody else is coming to mind. Ted, um, uh, well, when I started, so, um, when I bought the shop, I was doing a YouTube, uh, some YouTube videos and I was really spending a lot of time editing those. And because I was listening to your podcast, you're like, get something out there. And then I heard about anchor. So then I kind of started recording a podcast. Yeah. So, and then, but then you, and then you reached out to me. Yep. Yep. And so, and so I think what, what you're saying is if you don't reach out, yep. you're never, you never know what's going to happen. Right. Yep. You got, you got to reach out. So I guess what I was trying to get to That's without right. mentioning any names is if there's a person out there that you guys like to follow or a girl, um, that does a podcast or a blog or a YouTube channel, uh, or has an Instagram, reach out to them and they may not respond the first time, especially if they've got a bazillion followers. 
or Curtis, very busy guy with a lot of things going on. And but but not a huge amount of followers. So it's it's really cool when people reach out. And I do read everything. Um, just sometimes I don't have enough time to get back with everybody. But you kept, you know, and it wasn't like you were bugging me. It was just like every couple of weeks or month, you would reach out with something or say something and, and then we, or we'd have lunch and then we'd have, you know, talk about, Hey, let's yep. do podcast or, and so now here we are finally yeah. doing an episode of past. So what we're going to be doing is uh, at least on a monthly basis, Ken's going to pop in. We're going to do an episode together for that buzz guy. And I think what's going to happen is we're eventually going to find our groove, what we're going to talk about yep. today. We're just kind of winging it just to kind of reintroduce uh, everybody to you and I again. Um, and one of the things that I was thinking about this morning was, um, and then I had talked about my timing with um, Jim Evans hiring me and me moving oh, yeah. back to Enid and, and all that timing. But uh, what, what it occurred to me is it's never really timing. Um, you know, like my picture being on CNN with unrolling the Pharaoh poster, you know, oh, yeah. It was on CNN after she died, and that was, of course, it was timing. But if I hadn't put that picture, that poster online, that timing would have never happened. You, if you had never reached out to me, the timing of me wanting somebody to come in and, and do an episode a month on a podcast, it would have never happened. Me, uh, you know, doing Google ads, um, you know, if I hadn't uh, gotten into advertising online and was trying to figure out how to make money with advertising online, the timing would have never, you know, so, so even though timing is important, if you're not putting out content, a product, a service, if you're not out there putting yourself out there, there's never going to be timing. Yeah. I think it's, um, a lot of people often say I'm a, I was a, a 10 year overnight success. Yeah. You, you gotta get some, you gotta get some stuff out there or, or you, I mean, even like my videos. So I still have a YouTube channel. I haven't put a lot of videos on there, but, but I wasn't, it wasn't, it was taking a lot of time for editing and it was, but because I was still consuming other content and, and Curtis is the, the tips and things that you were sharing with the podcast and the, uh, uh, search optimization and those type of things. I was like, oh man. But the other the other thing with that, I believe, is not only uh, reaching out to someone to get to know them and to start that relationship, but also do some work on your end. So I, I would I would feel if Curtis, even though I hadn't developed a relationship with Curtis at the time, as he's telling me to get started and go do this stuff, if I wasn't doing it and I was just sitting around waiting, then. I didn't, I'm, I'm not upholding my end of the deal with Curtis to say, well, he asked me to do it. He's working, he's investing in me. He wasn't, it, he was investing in me through his podcast, but he's investing in me. So I have to do my part, which is start, get something going. So yeah. that also spoke volumes to Curtis, I believe that oh, says, yeah. Hey, this guy's trying to do this. This is a guy that I, that I, that, that wants to. And that's the same thing with, again, like you were saying, other people that you may want to reach out to or get to know. Well, you, you need to be doing some work too. You can't just say, hey, look at me. I'm sitting here doing nothing. I'm just waiting for that perfect opportunity because it's very unlikely that it's going to happen in that one time, that one moment. Yeah. And that, that is what struck me with you because you started a podcast after listening to some of my podcasts. And then all of a sudden I noticed you were actually doing more podcast episodes than <laughs> I was because I got busy and I kind of felt like I wasn't going in the right direction. And that's, again, what I've said before. Just get started. I don't start today. If you're watching this and you yep. still haven't started anything, start a video channel, start a blog, start a podcast, but get started today. Three months from now, you may be like, ah, oh, this isn't this isn't feeling right. This is but now you've got all that experience. You know how to do the sound quality, you know how to set the video up, you know about lighting. You you're you're it's it's only gonna help you to get started and get going. But you got the podcast going. I was like, hey, wow, Ken's done as many or more podcasts than I've done. And so he would be great. And then we did the podcast together where, where uh, you interviewed me and then I interviewed you. And I thought, well, hey, Ken would be a good guy because, you know, we're kind of in the same realm. Um, I consider you an entrepreneur. I consider me an indiepreneur. Yep. You rely on a brick and mortar or a physical location and employees. I rely on digital and myself and and just kind of wing it as I go. But Creativity. Um, Creativity, <laughs> not a straight for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, but we're we're both kind of heading in the same direction. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
So we've got something funny on my glasses there. Um, and so, so the other day, we've got this group in town called Leadership Greater Enid, which might be something you might think about yep. becoming a part of eventually. And every Absolutely. year they get about, I don't know, a dozen people together and they take them all over Enid and they, they introduce them to police and fire and government and medical and Vance Air Force Base and the media and just every realm of our city, they get to know. And so every year they ask me to speak during the media part. You know, what, you know, they'll go to the newspaper and they'll go to the radio stations and they'll have me come in and talk. And, and so I was telling them about Enid Buzz and, uh, you know, making it sound like really busy, like I'd never have a life. And, you know, it's so with, with me being in the media business, which is providing news and information, there's my favorite train, um, you know, it never stops, you know, so I don't, so I work, I could work, you know, 12, 14 hours a day right. and weekends and it never stops. And so at the end of the discussion, you know, I asked for questions and one of the guys said, well, why do you do Enid Buzz if it takes up all your time and you don't have any time with your family? And I obviously didn't describe it well enough. And so I told him the reason that I do Enid Buzz or what I'm doing is 100% freedom. So even though it sounds like I'm busy, yep. I have more freedom than almost everybody. Now look at you. So it's it's 10 o'clock on a Wednesday. Yeah. You own a business, a busy business, and you're here doing a podcast with me. So you've got freedom. I do. I do. And it's it's taking time. So in putting in a lot of extra time and working, like you were saying, with a business coach, I started working with a mentor lately that has really helped me to identify that I was... Uh, sacrificing some of those freedoms because I didn't have enough people in my business. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I'm very fortunate now to be, to be where I'm at. Uh, I've, we brought on several people in the last couple of months just to be able to do this because that is why I wanted to be an entrepreneur. That is why I wanted to own my own business was to have some of those freedoms, but I had allowed it to kind of consume. Con we were, we were very busy and I didn't have the manpower to, to keep it going, which was something that my mentor helped me to realize as a, as a entrepreneur or an entrepreneur, we, we have a different level, a different gear than a lot of people do as far as, well, I got to get all this stuff done and I got to get it done. However, I got to get it done. Whatever it takes, I got to get it done. I'm going to get it done. But some people on the employee side of things, well, this is enough. Yeah. I, I don't want more. And if you keep putting more on me, then I'm going to find ways to either slow this down or I'm not going to be able to keep up and I'm going to burn out and not, not be able to. 100 percent. Yeah. yeah. So I had to recognize that, well, yeah, I can do that because it's mine and I want to. But I, I have several people in my business that they would they don't want to. And that's that's OK. Yeah. So yeah. I had to bring some extra people on in order to be able to do that. And I probably could have taken away a few months ago, but it would have been a, a whole lot more difficult than just adding some more people and being able to do that. But I, again, man, go for it. Whatever it is, I, I heard a long time ago, uh, of course, uh, when when I was single, it was I remember it. Uh, she's already not you're already not dating her. Go ahead, go ahead and just yeah, ask yeah. her out. She, if she oh, says no, you're still not dating her because you weren't dating her before. You're you in the same out. position you started in. So whatever it is, like Curtis says, man, start it, get it going, um, because you never know where it may lead. And I, I'm again, I'm really stoked about this. And although uh, I did stalk Curtis, I stalked it all through Facebook. I today until now, this is the first time I've been to your yeah. house. I didn't know I didn't come by his house or anything yet. I hadn't oh, figured yeah, that yeah. out. Yeah, no, not 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 real stalking, but <laughs> but it's just it's kind of cool though when you have and so so like I do another podcast as well, uh, the Seventies Buzz podcast with another guy, and we've got two guys that follow us religiously, and we've all literally become really good friends and almost talk every day on Facebook. And one of them lives in Seattle, and one of them lives in Oregon. And Medford, Oregon, I believe, and and so you you develop these relationships, and that's why that's one hundred percent why I do that Buzz guy is to build these relationships, build this community, help you guys, anybody that Absolutely. can help with my knowledge. But then, like I get knowledge from you, you know, I, I you talk about you and your mentor, and that gives gives me ideas of things that I need to do. One of the things that I'm slowly doing right now is working. I don't have employees because I just hate the idea of having an employee, but I'm building new partnerships where other people are starting to take 
some of the stuff that I was doing, which is going to free me up. And so, so the whole point of that little conversation was the freedom working for yourself. You may work more hours right. than the average person, but you get to set those hours. And that's where True. the freedom comes yep. in. You, if you got to take off a 10 to go see your kids sing at a elementary concert, you can do that. There's nobody preventing you from doing that. You can, you can pivot. If you're, if your business is going in one direction and you think, Hey, it might be better if I go this way. You have the freedom to pivot your business. You don't have to go to a boss or an owner or a corporation and say, hey, what do you guys think if we did this? Because they're going to say no. Yeah. Um, and then again, I love your point of employees. Being an entrepreneur, you are going to find out that your employees are never going to be invested in your business as much as you. And it's just reality. They, they're there for a paycheck. They want to get home to their family. They want to work. I hate to say it, but as little hours as they have to, I think one of the things that I think with COVID that we're finding out is if a lot, and you can't, but um, in, in my business, if a lot of employers would let their employees have a little more freedom and like maybe work at home or get things done on their time, they would probably still get the same amount of work done, but that freedom would make them happier. Yep. Now they might end up working two hours less a week, but if they're still getting the same amount of work that you need done out of, done out of them, what does it matter? Right. It's almost like you, you kind of need to kind of do a mesh of a hourly salary type deal where, you know, you, you, I just remember working my, my eight to five job yep. at, at director of advertising. And I, you know, I got to the point where I could get my work done really quick and I might have three hours at the end of the day where I just didn't have any work that I needed to do. Yeah. And that was one of the really cool things about working for Evans Drug when I did was I would take that three hours and I learned software and I learned the internet yeah. and I learned. So I was using that time to benefit, you know, not only the business I was working at, but myself, but it would have been nice if, you know, knowing that I got everything done, that I could leave an hour early, yeah. you know, that I, I had, but I didn't, I, I probably could have, I was on salary, but I just, I didn't feel, you know, you know, I didn't own the business, so I didn't want to be hopping out, you know, coming in an hour late or leaving an hour early, but it would be cool to have more businesses where the owners, you were able to do that. Like, yep. you know, somebody came to you and said, look, I can't, I got to get off three hours early today, but I will come in and make up those hours on Saturday, or I will do them late tonight at my home or, you know, depending. Now I know, like I said, in retail or, or businesses like yours, you, that's harder to do because they've got to be at your business where the vehicle is to work yeah, on it. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that we've have been doing though, we've, we've slowed down just a little bit in our business. So we've, uh, we've been setting goals. So we, we set goals, uh, each of our departments set goals every day on what they want to accomplish. And then we celebrate the wins of those goals, or if we didn't hit them, what we could have done to help them hit the goals. And then, uh, right now, because we've slowed down a little bit, we're really focused on getting out early on Fridays. Oh. So a lot of times we're there all day Friday because we have a bunch of cars going or different things like that but right now we're we're actually in the in like thursday we're talking about what are we going to get done thursday and friday what cars are we going to have done and what how where are we going to have them in our process and if we hit that then we can leave when those things are done on friday so i think a testament to your point which also i agree like you said as far as the covid with a lot of people being able to work from home i think that uh, the right people realize that well I'm working from home if anything they're probably going to be making sure that I'm getting my stuff done way more than I was before and I think a lot of these uh, big corporate buildings are they're 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 a thing of the past I think we'll we'll find soon because we can trust people to do their job at home and that and that's it not not every employee yeah. you're, is going to be able to do that there right. there are some employees that will take a, try to take advantage of that and and you just have to be on top of it and you know what what you expect out of an employee like you know this person needs to have this this and this done by this time. And if they don't, then you know, they're probably not going to be the right person. And you've either got to bring them back in for that eight to five, or you've got to fire, find somebody else. But, um, you know, that I, I just think giving people a little more freedom makes them happier, right. which makes them want to work for you even more because they know, Hey, if I quit this job and go to another one, it's going to be an eight to five. I'm not going to have any freedom to go and do what I want. So you would hope that those type of employees would value that freedom and work harder for you just to be able to have that freedom. Yep. 
I, I agree completely. Speaking of uh, some of that work-life balance, I was going to ask you about you were, when you were a speaker at the Balanced Life Workshop. Yeah. We talked a little bit about that before you did it. Um, and I maybe you have a podcast or something coming up where you're going to share a little bit about it. But I was, you know, I think there, I think, uh, and I ought to post a link to that. I think they're going to post all of those um, talks. Oh. And, and so it was kind of a workshop where they talked about, you know, your mental fitness, your physical fitness, uh, business. Um, what else did they talk about? Um, oh, they had like five different speakers. And I, I was one of the, I was the speaker for business. Um, at last minute, they just called me up last minute. Um, but, uh, it was really, so, so you work with a mentor. Yep. I worked with a business coach just, just one time, which I got a lot out of it. Yeah. There's these workshops, there's these seminars. They're really pretty cool things to go to. They kind of help boost you. And that kind of, that's what this kind of was. It was kind of a, come in and get this extra help and these extra tips and, and all this. Um, it was, it was pretty cool. I yeah. mean, I basically, I just retold my story again, um, and talked about again, if you hear my story, which go back to the prior episodes and stuff, you know, it seemed like my timing was always perfect. You know, this happened and right. then this happened, which, but it, the only reason the timing was perfect, the only, the only reason Enid Buzz, the, started when it did, the timing was perfect, but it was because I already had started in it, but it, it had already been going. Right. And then I just took advantage of the timing and, and built it up even more. But had I not started any buzz and tried to start it from scratch at that, it, the timing wouldn't have, you know, so timing, timing's never going to work out if you're not making an effort to meet that, whatever that opportunity, I get, you got to meet that timing is, is meeting opportunity at the right time. But if you're not putting forth something to meet that opportunity, you're never going to meet it. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, no effort. If you're not putting any effort in to get anything, then, then it's, you're going to, that opportunity, that window that was going to be there, that was open, you're going to miss it because you weren't doing anything to prepare for it. Yeah. So remind everybody real quick how you went from working for a r rather large yep. auto body dealership to owning your own. Yeah. Uh, so again, I guess you could say, perfect timing. Uh, but I had, um, started to have some frustrations with the company that I was at. I, um, oversaw five locations and I was the, um, the general manager and I oversaw the locations. I answered to the owner and, um, I really wanted more, but I wasn't, um, I really didn't, I wanted more of that shop and that wasn't available. So, uh, I had, uh, my wife is from Kremlin, which is just a little bit north of Enid. And, you, and you're living in Kansas at this yep, time. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so we would come down to visit when my wife and I were dating, we would come down and visit her parents at the Enid MB church, which is right across the street from the shop that I now own. And because this is, because I've been in the auto body industry for about 20 years, I noticed wrecked cars <laughs> and I noticed body shops. Uh, whenever my son, my 13 year old son, whenever we go to small towns where he plays football or wrestling or basketball or whatever, I drive around and look at shop. We have a break in between a game or something and I'll drive around and just look at body shops of what I feel like looks nice. And so had noticed this shop across the street and it looked like a nice building. And I just made a phone call. Um, I called, got a hold of the owner and um which is also not very common a lot of times when you call if you just cold call a business and want to talk to the owner that's a pretty good indication that you're trying to sell them yeah. something yeah and so fortunately uh got an opportunity to talk to dave the owner and um he said he would consider it so i would drive so there was so there wasn't like a for sale sign no in the front no, of this sir. auto body you <laughs> called him cold call yep you so, so the timing was what you're about to, sorry, yeah, no, what you're no, about no, to end good. up saying, yeah, the timing was good, but there would have been no timing if you hadn't put forth the effort to call him. Yep. That's, that's you trying to meet the opportunity, but then the timing, because you did the opportunity, the timing, that time was, was great. Yep. And, and before that, um, the, actually a year and a half before that, I had had a conversation with the owner of the company that I used to work for about wanting more, wanting, and it just, it really went bad. It Ooh. was just really tough on our relationship. And so I had set at that moment, I had decided that I was going to save a hundred thousand dollars in two years. And so I just 
said that I'm going to tighten up my, I had little debt at that time. I'd been recently divorced, so I had a little bit of debt. So I paid that off and then I just started putting away money. And one of the things that happened in that conversation, which was really just me indicating my frustrations and also letting him know that I wanted to be an owner, that I wanted some more, I wanted some of the freedom and I wanted some of that. And I felt like I was coming from my feelings as if I could talk to a friend and say, hey, here's where I'm at. And, and it went completely a way that I had no intentions of it going and it got kind of ugly. And so, um, he probably took it as you being disloyal or something. Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of, right. Just kind of being greedy. Potentially. I felt like I had poured my heart and soul into that company and, uh, was tried to give a fair, uh, the first conversation had been kind of feelings based. And then I took that as well. He wants me to prepare or to give him a plan. And so then I came with a plan of what I felt like my sweat equity was worth and wanting a company car and wanting a pretty substantial raise and things that I felt were, uh, and I didn't just pull them out of my butt. I had talked with some other shop owners that, that weren't in our market or that weren't, and I didn't want to jeopardize his relationship with anybody, but just had talked with some other people to try to get some admiration. And it just went, when it went so bad, I just knew then I had to kind of put my plan in place of, of when I, when to leave. And it started with saving money. And so I just started saving everything that I could, what I would get from my owner, a little bit of ownership that I had in that company, started saving it. And then um, in February, 2019, I made a phone call to David Roberts, the former owner of Roberts, Body Shop now, Enid Auto Body. And uh, he said, yeah, let's talk. So I drive down. Um, I live two hours away, two and a half, two hours and 15 minutes from Enid. I drive down uh, to meet with him for about an hour and a half just to kind of see where he's at, what he's thinking, and then drive back home. And my wife and I would pray. We prayed for several months leading up to that. And we pray every day for answers and just things to help us. And um, slowly more things just kind of kept happening and some of the frustrations kept building and, um, and then people would reach out. Someone would reach out. I had a, I spoke at an event, uh, with some other shop owners and managers. So, um, in my role, we would once a quarter, we would go, uh, visit with other shop owners, a, a vision group or, a 20 group sometimes are called where meet with other shop owners and managers, mostly owners that aren't, you're not in competition with. And we would meet there and they had, they asked me to present about the process that our shop uh, operated under and how we worked and our team pay and all of our structure. That's really unique. Uh, and it's unique the way that we do it at, you know, Auto Body, very similar to what we did in Wichita, but it was unique. And so um, I was nervous about this because these are people that own uh, some of them own 30, body shops. Wow. Uh, yeah. Five, the five that we had were one of the smaller shops in this group. And so I got the opportunity to speak in front of them and I was nervous, but I, I, I crushed it, which is, you know, felt good. And I had multiple people commenting on the, on it. Um, and then later that night in the hotel, my wife, my wife and son are coming down where it was in Orlando and they're coming down like, well, hey, we can extend this weekend. And so I'd had a couple of beers in the bar after the meeting. And I was talking with one of the guys and he noticed that there was some tension between me and the um, and the former owner. And so a couple of beers just kind of I for the most part, I kept that stuff private. But, you know, it got a little loose with the, after a couple of beers and he um, and I just thought I was just kind of venting. So the next day I'm sitting at the pool uh, with my family, uh, just kind of a little bit frustrated that my presentation had gone so well and I didn't really get, you know, a, a pat on the back goes a long ways for me. Uh -huh. and I didn't get a pat on the back. I didn't get a great job. And so I just kind of had that in the back of my mind. And then another guy that I've looked up to and worked that owns multiple shops in Kansas city and Omaha, Nebraska called me up and he said, you can do it. Uh, I believe in you and, uh, you should. Wow. Very and, cool. Yeah. And that was May of 2019. And then, and then that's when I really had to start putting that plan in place to, to be able to do it. And so in September, uh, I left, uh, well, one other thing that's really cool about my son. So I had been, we, my wife and I hadn't really told anybody that kind of what we we're doing. We we're trying to make sure it was going to work out and where we were uh -huh. at. And mm -hmm. so we kept it pretty private, but we'd also wanted our, our son to know my son, from a previous marriage to know what we were working on. And he went to, um, 
he he had we had been talking with him and you know hey keep it quiet we, we don't you know but he's 12 or whatever <laughs> at the time and so he and he did a pretty good job of it but i remember in um in september uh, actually it was in end of august of 2019 uh, we had been i'd been letting him know and i was trying to figure out my timing of when everything was going to work out I, what i had decided he didn't know but what i had decided was i was really close to my 10 year anniversary at that company so I thought I'm going to make it to the 10 years and then they've got a lot of stuff, transition stuff coming up. So I'm going to make that transition before they get into all this other stuff. Cause I can't get into that and leave in the middle uh -huh. of some of these big projects. So my son had started school. Like the second day of school, there was this Ted talk uh, that talks about the panic monster and how in high school we have the panic high school or college. We have the panic monster of these deadlines so we got this term paper that's due. Well, we, we've known this term paper is due for three months, but we a lot of times we wait until the last minute to do the term paper uh, the, the night before or whatever else. And, and what he was, the, the TED Talk talks about is that what's happened is the panic monster is activated and we can stay up all night, do, drink Red Bulls and whatever else, and we get the term paper in. It's certainly not the greatest term paper, but we got it in. We, yeah. pa we passed. Uh, we, we met the assignment. What happens in life, though, is we don't have that panic monster moment of, well, yeah, I'd like to do a podcast someday, or yeah, I'm going to do a YouTube video someday, or I'm going to buy a shop someday, and potentially nothing activates that panic monster. Well, my son, he so he made me watch this. They showed it at school, and he made me watch it. And then at the end of that video, he said, Dad, I'm setting a deadline. Oh, wow. Very you cool. Yeah, you have until the end of September to have that conversation of where that you're leaving. And that was that, that was that last moment of it, it's time we're doing it. And then, um, and then put in my notice a few weeks later, I was unemployed and off work for a while while the, uh, SBA was getting loans and things kind of figured out, getting everything finalized. And then in, on December 30th of 2019, then I took over the ownership of wow. what was Roberts and now Enid Auto Body and, uh, start on that journey and I documented I, my goal was to document a lot of that on my YouTube channel which we have shown a lot of we, I was really showing a lot of the um, the videos and the changes in the shop but then it changed um, because we didn't have these massive changes so it was pretty minor so it kind of turned into me talking to the video and then shortly thereafter I'm listening to the buzz guy podcast that says hey you should download the anchor app and and get a podcast started i'm like well that's going to fit way more than my schedule yeah than me trying to edit these videos that are podge podge and that's certainly not of the high quality that stuff that curtis does and so i just I, I didn't like it as much but i'd done it for three months uh -huh. at the recommendation of curtis i kept it going for three months i still have the channel and i'll eventually upload something more or get something going again there a little bit more of my likings but yeah the the my podcast is because curtis encouraged me to do so and it fit well with my schedule i could drive i drive two hours not every day but several times a week and i can record it while driving the audio is not going to be as good a quality as Curtis's is, but it's it's pretty good. I put a little background music in, and yeah. I can just kind of mess with it. But I got something going. Do do what you got to do to yep. get it done. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So. Yeah. So so that is an extremely great story for a go for it. I mean, yeah. and and then we talk about timing, man. The timing, it was a miracle. The timing right. that he, you know, you called him. No, it was the timing was good because you you set the opportunities in motion. And so, man, I mean, talk about a great example. I yeah. mean, in the same, you know, if you listen to my last podcast episode, you know, yeah. when I got the job to come up to Enid, they didn't call me on the phone out of the blue. Sure. I, I went and looked in the paper and was searching out a job and had made it my decision. I was going to quit my job and go find another job. And of course, timing was great, but it wouldn't have been great if I hadn't had taken the opportunity to start looking for your opportunity wouldn't happen if you hadn't uh, started looking for another business and been thinking all along, Hey, that I did. Wow. Well, I don't think I knew all, all the details oh, yeah. of that. Yeah. I don't know that we got that deep into oh, it on, yeah. on our other. Right. Yep. So yeah. So that's a good, uh, I'm glad I brought that up again just to hear yeah. that story. So, so we're two perfect examples of we're both working for ourselves, great freedom, um, enjoying life, happy, and Absolutely. it's because of opportunities that we created for ourselves. We didn't wait for somebody to call us up on the phone and say, hey, you guys, I'm going to start a business for you, and all you've got to do is run it. 
it just doesn't work that way. Right. Um, you've got to create the opportunities. Again, with your, your YouTube channel, I've got those type of things all over the place. Yep. Um, that was what my Curtis Tucker dot com blog was. So back in, you know, mid 2000, 2005, I had started it and I was uploading those pictures, the pictures of me with the Fair Fawcett poster and pictures of me in, in 70s because it was kind of a daddy 70s blog. Oh, OK. But then I kind of got busy with other stuff and it, it kind of sat there. But if it hadn't sat there on the Internet, the opportunities that it has brought me over the years would have never happened. So even though your video, you're not updating your yeah. video channel now, that's the cool thing about YouTube is if you kind of make evergreen, what we call evergreen videos, which mean they don't really ever expire. You know, it's not like, you know, if you're talking about a, a, a an event that happened today, well, a year from now, it's probably not going to be right. as good a video. But if you're talking about how to, like I took, a, I, I took apart my Yeti uh, microphone last night. And I didn't know exactly all the screws. And, and so I got on YouTube and I found a YouTube video of how to take a Yeti microphone together. That video is going to be good for 10 years unless the Yeti microphones really, really change. And right. the three screws that you have to take out turn into four or five. But so, so again, create that content, put it out there, leave it out there, continue to add to it, stay consistent. And eventually... I I just almost guarantee you, if you just keep after it, something yep. will come. I mean, it may not be a million dollars. It may not be your own business. Um, but if you're not putting something out there, the timing's never going to match the opportunity because you're just, you're never going to be in the right position for, to grab that opportunity when it comes by because you're not doing anything. Yep. You're sitting on your duff watching Netflix or TikTok. Um, right. it, it, there's, we got so many people wasting so much time. But again, I think you had said it earlier in this episode, people like us have like an extra gear. Yeah, I think so. And, and everybody does it. And that's fine. Right. There, I know a lot of people. I know a lot of people. And they love to wake up and go to work at 8, take an hour lunch, and go home at 5, and never do anything else. They yep. love to drink their beer, right. watch their football, Go to bed at eight, yep. never exercise, never listen to motivational audio, never read motivational books. And that is that is fine. And so those guys are probably never going to follow me. They're probably <laughs> yeah, never going to check out sure. that Buzz Guy podcast or my YouTube channel right. um, because that's not I'm for the guys that are in that that have have that extra gear and are always like and like and another thing that you said was cool is when you were working in your job, even though it sounds like it was a great job, you knew that you wanted more. Yeah. Yep. And that, that, and so I always say that one of the first things, every time I got a new job out of college, one of the first things I did was always, so I, I had my job, I was set, I had money coming in, but then I always started looking for the next job because I knew that wasn't it. I knew there was something more. Even when I became the advertising director, my pay was decent for the time. I was living in Enid, small town. So you know, I had a, a job with a title. I was making money. Yep. But I still knew that I wanted more. And so even the 10 years that I worked as an advertising director, I applied for jobs at TV stations and and always had a side business going. I was always doing graphic design and logos and eventually web design on the side, not knowing that, yeah, one day that could be my full-time business, thinking maybe, you know, it could develop into it, but not knowing for sure. But without having kept doing that on the side, it never would have. Well, and you kept getting better. I, th I think the also going to the, the go for it, and even as you'd said here a moment ago, when you did have some free time, you weren't just sitting around yucking it up. You were looking at the software programs and learning exactly. about the software programs. And I was going to ask you, what what do you think that made you like that? Or what 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 was it that you wanted to s seek out? Outside of just getting better, I guess, I mean, right? It just. It's... I think it. Yeah, I think it was just. It, yeah, it's. I don't know what it, what it is. I think. I think we've got this weird gene or something, yeah. and that's why there's only certain people that do it. But, yeah, I mean, I learned. Well, I mean, I guess in my mind, very rarely do I ever think, "Oh, I can't do that." I just. I'm like somebody hands me something and says, "Well, here's how you do it." I'm like. I, I never look at it and say, oh, well, I can't, I can't do that. I just grab it and I'm like, oh, this is something I got to figure out. And so, yeah. so that's where my whole thing started was 
I was doing some cartoon logos and wanting to sell some, some cartoons. And I've told this story a million times and I wanted the guy to build me the website. We, I didn't know what websites really right. were. I didn't know how hard they were to build. I didn't know anything about code. I barely was, you know, that familiar with the internet. And, and he handed me that software and said, look, I can't build it for you, but this software can. And, you know, it, I didn't go home and throw it down and say, I can't look. I mean, I went home and I opened it up and I started learning. And <laughs> this then, is too hard. I quit. <laughs> yeah. I guess, I guess I've, I've kind of got like, I guess, an addiction to figuring things out and, yeah. and trying to. So even today, you know, I've got kind of multiple businesses going. I'm Absolutely. making money. I've got freedom, but I'm still looking for that next thing. I'm yeah. still looking for that. You know, like, is it that buzz guy? Is it a book I'm writing? Is it going to be a clothing line? Um I, I don't know. Well, it's kind of like the podcast. I obviously I have a day job. I have a business where it is a, it is a job in a sense as far as I need to be there eight to five. You know, we're open eight to five, and I typically get there early and stay late. And and when I'm in town, I'm I'm here working most of the time. Just uh, but I also have my podcast because who knows what's next? Who knows where that may lead? But it is something that I've always wanted to do, and because you encourage me, I got started. Yeah, and there's no reason you can't do both. Again. If you, if you are listening to this or watching this, get a sheet of paper out for the next week and just jot down how much time you waste. How many hours are you watching TikTok? How many hours are you watching Netflix? What time, and, and I know sleep is really important, but I do not go to bed before 12. Yeah. I just literally don't get in bed. I can't. I got so much going on. I can't get in bed by 12 and I'm up at six every morning I'm to do my workout. Uh, hour and a half of workout every morning. Um, and it's just, I think it's just discipline. Yeah. I, I guess uh, people like us um, have that extra gear, but then we also have the discipline to stick with it. And I, and I think that's one of the most important thing is the, the stick with itness. Yep. You know, a lot of people try something and, and they give up or uh, something that I thought of what you were talking earlier was, when you approach people, like let's say somebody created a course and you bought the course for a thousand dollars and you tried it for three days and you didn't get a thousand people following you. So you contact the guy that wrote the course and you're, you're like, Hey man, I really love your course, but you know, I'm just not, he's going to look at you and say, look, you've given it three days, <laughs> right. you know, put some effort into right. it, put some consistency into it, put some time into it. And, and let's see where it goes. And, and a lot of people that do buy those courses, you know, if, if, if they all worked, everybody would be rich. So yeah. obviously the course isn't what makes you rich. It's your motivation, your consistency, well, your, your angle on it that makes those courses and those things successful. Yeah. I think that, uh, I think that a lot of books and, and I've listened to a lot of books and a lot of podcasts they all have the same kind of theme, which is go, go do it yeah. and fail and screw things up. Uh, don't be afraid to fail and, and don't be afraid to screw up, but pick yourself up and go get it again and keep trying. And eventually you'll get lucky. Yeah. Yeah. You're 10. Yeah. 10 years later, you're going to be an overnight sensation, yeah, right? which happens to a lot of people. Um, and so, yes. And with Enid Buzz, you know, I started it in 2005, but so it was started. It was something out there. I was feeding some content into it. Not much, not staying yeah. super consistent with it, but it was there and it was growing. And then in 2013 is when I made it a full-time business. But had I not had it going, stayed consistent, kept it online, kept uh, updating it, there would have been no base for me to be able to grab it and say, hey, let's try to make a business out of this. So, Which is that time you had to put in of, of evenings or weekends or whenever, or whenever whenever you could to keep it yeah. to keep it going. Yeah, so, so to most people, Enid Buzz was an overnight sensation because right. of Facebook. You know, the Facebook page exploded in 2013 and I had all these followers. And But I'm like, look, dudes, I've been doing this, you know, <laughs> right. I've been doing all this internet stuff since 1999, right. but awesome. Enid Buzz since 2005, yeah. Um, you know, so yeah, so when I started, I mean, and I think I talked about it before, you know, I graduated college, five years of college, graphic mm -hmm. advertising design degree in 1986. I didn't even know there was desktop computers, <laughs> let alone know how to turn one on. 
no, you know, everything I did was, was wax and border tape, you know, on layout and, and there were no graphics programs, you know, and so trying to get a job, you know, back then was you carried a black case of portfolio with your drawings oh, in it wow. and you'd go into advertising agencies. I, I left college and went to Dallas to, to make a huge career. And I got yeah. down to Dallas and I opened up my portfolio and I had these sketches of hands and, and figures, you know, and figure drawing class. And these advertising directors are looking at me like, dude, you, we're, we can't hire you. We, what experience do you have? And I'm like, well, I don't have any experience. I, I need a job to get experience. And they're like, well, you can't get a job without experience. So it was that, it was that catch 22. So I was, you know, doing all that before internet and digital and knowing software and, and, but you just kind of, you just got to figure it out. So I, you know, tucked my tail between my legs and came back to Enid and worked at, uh, I think I worked at, uh, the golf place out at, uh, Vance for a while, you know, oh, you, you, you do what right. you got to do yep, to get absolutely. a job. And then I think I went back to Oklahoma city and got a job uh, as a silkscreen printer in Oklahoma City, not utilizing really any of the stuff that I'd learned in college, but I was in kind of an art-related field. And uh, so my first job was silk screening signs, uh, stickers and signs and huh. all that. But that gave me the base of knowing how to silk screen. So years later, when I moved to Enid, I bought it, silk screen equipment put it in my basement and started printing my own t-shirts because I, I knew how the yeah. printing process worked. And so I was selling my own t-shirts probably it was in the early nineties, 1990s, um, selling them to Vance pilot. I did a, a Vance design. So I was selling, you know, those and, and then eventually got divorced, had to sell my house. So I sold that, that silk screening equipment. And then all like 20 years later, me and my buddy decided to print our own t-shirts again Luckily, we found the brother of the guy that had bought the stuff for me. He never used it one time. Wow. It had never come out of the storage unit that it was in. Wow. We went in, dragged it out, still had my screens on the equipment. We bought it back. And now, um, awesome. so one of my side businesses is, is so we opened up a retail store. Uh, we now open it up every holiday on, on Christmas. And you know, we only made, I think, $600 this last holiday, but we didn't do anything. Right. You know, we literally had already had a lot of T-shirts printed up, printed up a few more, threw them in a store. We let the other guy run the store. I did some advertising for it and we came out with 600 bucks, which, nice. you know, for not putting a whole lot of effort in, yep. wasn't anything. But anyway, so I guess my point there is everything you do is could lead to something down the road. So that's why I'm telling you guys, learn, start that podcast, start that blog, start that YouTube channel. It's you're building that base, you're building that knowledge that and doing other things, creating a product, starting an Etsy store, you're learning about retail, you're learning about, you know, taxes and, and eventually five years down the road, hopefully three or four of those things that you've learned over the years are all going to get together and that's going to be your opportunity and, and you're going to be able to start your own business and get going on something. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Well, and I you had said in some of your prior uh, episodes about starting a side gig. Yeah. Know, so that's my big deal. Yeah, Everybody yeah. start a side. I don't care yeah. what you got to start a side gig. I, even if you're happy in your job, right. COVID has taught us 1000% that no job, there's no job security. Right. Um, and so COVID people that thought they had jobs forever have lost their jobs. And so had all those people had a side gig, they may not definitely wouldn't be making as much money as they were in their job, but at least that's a foothold to get something Which else started. may lead to something else yeah. or something that you can get into or a new a new career i mean there there's so many things out there and and like you said just who would have thought that you would be where you're at with the internet and the yeah. websites and all that stuff yeah when got you, out of college and there was no <laughs> such thing as really right. desktop computers and internet and, but, and then here i am so but you kept going kept kept, kept Kept going, kept learning. Yep. You guys keep going, keep learning, keep listening, keep checking in with us. Keep uh, so Tell them about your podcast real quick where they can find it. Oh, yeah. It's the Ken Hunnell Podcast. It's on all the platforms. So uh, at iTunes, um, wherever. Uh, um, I can't think of the Spotify. So any, any of those outlets, uh, it's available. It's also on the Anchor app. And um, it's, it's pretty random. Uh, a lot of times it's some shop-related stuff as far as 
things that we got going on in the shop. So if you're in the collision repair industry, you, you, there's some things that will really relate to, but there's also people stuff. And there's lots of, uh, I screwed this up or I handled this thing wrong stuff. Uh, just, I, I really try to be very transparent in that and, and let you know what, what I'm doing well and what I'm not doing well. And, uh, there's some dad stuff mixed in there and, and, uh, hanging out with my buddies or different or, or getting to know, uh, Curtis and just, uh, it, it's, it's pretty random, but it's primarily focused on the growth of my shop and, and just kind of the involvement that we're going through from, from not, not, not owning a business to owning a business and then the transition, uh, and, and people things, and then even gets into some of the things with my mentor and some of the things that he's helped me out a bunch, uh, opening my eyes. And so. It's, yeah. Uh, so a lot of business stuff. So yeah, even if yeah. you're not in the collision, you might no, give right. it a listen. Yep. And then uh, real quick, where do they find you on the YouTube channel? Uh, it's also Ken Hunnell. Okay. Um, yep. Ken Hunnell. Uh, I don't actually, that's a good question. I probably should have been more prepared. Well, no, just go to YouTube and type <laughs> in Ken Hunnell and yep. it should K pop up. Yep. Two N's and two L's. K-E-N-H-U-N-N-E-L-L. -L. Yeah. So, yep. Cool. Yep. Okay. Well, wow. We got through our first episode. Man, I don't know that... You know, I'll have to figure out what to title it, but uh, right. really this is kind of a, kind of a, I, I guess we'd kind of call it the trailer for you and I, yeah. Again, we'll be doing this monthly. Um, yeah. You know, some months we may have a topic and some we may just ramble or there may be something in the news, but we'll always try to keep it kind of entrepreneur business um, related. It, may, it could be family though. I yeah. mean, lifestyle or, you know, try to keep it fun and informative Try to and try to. I think the number one thing I'd like to us to do is to help motivate people yeah, to absolutely. get get to where we are. Be us. Start. Be you know. Six months from now, I want to see you on a YouTube channel with your buddy doing a podcast and a YouTube video, and you email us and and we'll watch it. And you know, if we all kind of follow each other and 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 learn from each other, especially learning from each other's mistakes, man, we're going to get to where we need to be quicker. And I think that's one of the reasons a lot of people like you and I put ourselves out there is to, you know, here's what, what works and here's what doesn't work. So avoid what doesn't work so you can get to what works quicker and yep. um, help and, motivate each other. And get it out there. I, it, if you wait till it's perfect, you're never going to get started. Yeah, that's why yeah. I, I love the Anchor app and it, yep. the sound quality like this. I do not know what this episode is going to sound like. Uh, real quick, I try to be transparent, and I, I like to try test different things on this. So this podcast is being recorded on a little Sony. Uh, it's just a little Sony recorder that, like, if you were a reporter, you'd go interview somebody, and you were going to write an article. You would interview them and record it, and then that way you could go back and listen to it. So it's a I hate to pick it up because it might joggle the sound, but it's got a dual microphone in it. So I've got the Rode um, Wireless Go I'm wearing. Ken has a lavalier mic, and they're both going into the Sony. So that's the audio for the podcast. And then for the video and audio on the YouTube channel, it's just straight out iPhone 12. We got it filming backwards. Uh, no mics going into it. We are in a small room. Um, hopefully it, the sound quality is good on that, but, uh, you know, so that'll kind of give you guys a guide on what's, what things are working. Um, hopefully by our next episode, I'm going to have two USB microphones that will be plugged directly into a computer. That's going to be our best sound quality, but... I didn't want to not do an episode today yep. just as an excuse because my microphone didn't come in. You guys can think of a million excuses why you're not going to get something started, and that's why you're never going to get something started. Don't let an excuse stop you. Go to the Anchor app on your phone. That's all you need. You're done. That's your microphone. It's, it's, that's your... It's really easy. It, it, it uploads it to the things you need it to upload. I mean, it's just everything all in one. Uh, YouTube, all you need is your phone. It goes straight to YouTube. Upload it to YouTube. Um blogging. Blogging is a little harder. There are a lot of free blog uh, out, but you can blog from your phone. You can get on um, wordpress.com and set up a blog there. Um, there's Tumblr, there's Weebly, there's Wix, there's uh, a bunch of different areas. To well, the same thing. So I started a website because you encouraged me to start a website. It's not, it's certainly not at the level of Curtis's websites, but it's a website, and so it has. So you can go to kenhunnell.com. I forgot about that, and oh. find, and get links to my YouTube. Uh, there you and, go, and the apps and all those things. So and I, that, and I highly recommend right now 
go to GoDaddy and buy your name. Yep. If you got a really popular name like John Smith, <laughs> um, you know, so, so like on YouTube, for some reason, YouTube wouldn't let me name my channel youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker. And I don't know why. Nobody's got Curtis Tucker, but it just wouldn't let me do it. Oh. So it's Curtis Tucker TV on YouTube. But go to GoDaddy. I've purchased uh, Piper Tucker and Cheney Tucker for my two daughters. So, so hopefully one day they'll start their own blogs or, or, you know, promote themselves on there. But go buy your name, domain name. It's only going to cost you 15 tops probably 15 bucks a year you don't have yeah. to put a website on it just buy the domain name um if the if, if it's already taken which if you have a semi-popular name it's going to be taken add your middle initial or add your full middle name or add something onto the end like blog podcast tv you know something but reserve that now and that that's a step yeah you've, ta you've taken a step yep there you go you can feel good about that you you've got something accomplished the other thing i would recommend um something i do is i have a limit on my phone. So iPhone, you can set your app limits. So I have an hour, oh, wow. uh, an hour long limit on Facebook. You can get lost and stuck and deep into Facebook. And so you were talking about it earlier, some discipline stuff. Uh, that's one thing that I do is I just have an hour long limit on my a Facebook good idea. stuff. And then it, it tells, it tells you, and I can override it. And sometimes on a Saturday afternoon, I may override it. And, but at least I'm, aware of it and I've let myself know that yeah that's enough now do you ever get on TikTok I don't I have gotten on there a little bit I think when when again I'd heard a little bit about you talked a little bit about it I have an account um I haven't posted anything I've watched I've but the it, handful of times I got on there yeah I got it, it will suck your <laughs> yes. time right yeah, out of your yeah. whole life so so be aware of those apps I mean they again you got to sit down and you got to mentally decide what am I going to do? Am yep. I going to do make every effort that I can to start my own business, to make my own money, to have my own freedom, or am I going to sit here and enjoy TikTok and Facebook and Netflix and eat potato chips and and you know get out of shape and not have anything built? And so the timing's never going to be right because you've never put anything out there for an opportunity. But but we can't talk you into that. No, nope. it's something. It's like quitting smoking. Right. Either you're either going to do it or you're not. You are going to do it. Not, not a counselor, not a program, not a, you got to decide. And so I think uh, that's one of the things I've always had a weird ability. When I decide something one day, I quit drinking pop 25 years ago, literally one day. I just, that day I said, you know what? Too much sugar. I'm feeling yucky every day. I'm, I've gained 15 pounds. I'm going to quit drinking pop. Never again. Yep. 20 Two twenty-five years. I can't. Even, I don't even know. Yeah, Tony Robbins say you can uh, you can change anything in in less than a second. You yep. just make that decision to. Yep. I'm not going to drink pop. Mindset. I'm not smoke anymore. Mindset. Yep. Yeah. You just make a decision, and then you then you follow through with it. Yep. Okay. I guess awesome. we'll get out of here. Thanks. Great, Ken. Yep. This has been Thanks. fun. Oh man, it was awesome. I'm so excited to be able to do that. Like because I went for it. Uh, I, I'm here. So yeah, look, I mean, you. yeah, Ken, he's on, we're doing a podcast <laughs> right. together. I mean, who who would have thunk? So. I've been looking up to this guy for over a year and following him around and uh, just, re you know, I, I didn't know where he lived before, I promise. And uh, now here we are. So yeah. thanks, man. Yeah, seems so weird. So anyway, I may even come up with a name for our, our <laughs> episode each month. But anyway, you guys have a great day out there. Um, if you're without a job, man, you got all the time in the world to start doing something. Please start it today. If you do have a job, start your side gig today. Um, you don't have to be making money with it, but it's a good opportunity to get something going. And appreciate you guys checking in, and we will talk to you guys next time. See you later. See ya.